DojaToja.com. Right here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even know that song was going to end so fast. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> oh, man, my brother Blood Raw, man. The name of the song is Here I Am. Yes, sir, Here I Am. I had to run downstairs and get me some water so we can cool off. We live on the Facebook, live on the Twitch app, live on the Mixler app. It's DojaToja.com, you dig? Still happy to be here, you know? DJ TC. Defy my niggas like me. DJ Shed Street, the Street King. I ain't going nowhere. Yes, sir. I promise you that. <laughs> That's how <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Fresh shot the rapper like a 36. Yeah. And the motherfuckers locking like a bowl of tell drinks. Tell a friend to tell a friend, man. They roll these niggas knockoffs. And the dope boy saying talk that brie talk. The numbers back low like an 06. I'ma need a couple pallets and a forklift. I'ma need a lot of bags and some baking soda. The runs leaking through the seals, gotta kill the odor. If it all go right, that's a mean lick. Elon Musk, them bitches got Tesla prints. The rush give you chills, gotta move light. Can't be fucking with these niggas, gotta move right. Penitentiary chances, but it's worth the risk. I just pray these fuck niggas keep me out the mix. Can't be moving all sloppy, make the right decisions. Turkey bags like we celebrating Thanksgiving. Got the street niggas proud, how a nigga coming. If all else fails, we gon' get some money. All traps closed, it's a gangster service. Can your puss ass to church if you scared of nervous? We're listening to Doja Told You Radio. If they think they me, man, tell them to do what I did, man. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dame Doja. If you're looking to get your interview done or be a guest host on our podcast, hit us up at dojatoja at gmail.com. Bump what you heard. Remember who told you? It's Doja Toja. Go through about 100 episodes on another podcast, but call it a radio show. Then come back and then do a podcast with your brother. Then come back. And then do a podcast by yourself and start over and name it after your other podcast and start from number one and count all the way up to a hundred. Since they think they bad, since they think this shit is easy, tell them do what I did since they think they me, man. Yeah. Since they think they could get past episode 10. DJ TC probably got like 100 episodes. He been doing his thing every Friday for like the last three years. Shout out to him. <laughs> DJ Shed Street been doing his thing. He probably owned about 50. He probably got about 50 episodes in the tub. Every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. with the Sunday morning mixtape, a.k.a. the Sunday morning archives with Christian Hip Hop. <laughs> then you got little old me. Every Thursday, Fee, but Fee used to support us back when we was doing this shit on Wednesdays. We started doing it on Wednesdays, and then I had to get a job. I had to turn, I had to change it to, to Thursdays because that was the only day I had off. <laughs> and we still here, man. Shout out to Illuminiki. I'm gonna work on getting the um getting the Facebook chat on the main screen, but just know that I see y'all. I, I love y'all. I uh I appreciate y'all support and we're still here man here i am man just like my brother blood raw but now here's a message from one of the greatest of all time let's hear what he got to say 
Let's hear what he got to say real quick. Disrespect you. Um, it's okay. Um, it's absolutely okay. Um, you know, uh, know who paved the way. Um, you know, you know, understand that. You know what a professional is all about. Be a pro. Um, you know, show up to work. Be ready to work. Um, if you're on time, you late. Um, put the work in. And the game gives back to you when you put the work in. That's, that's what the game guys do. So, you know, come to the gym. We're one of the first ones to the gym. We one of the last ones to leave. You know, and uh, just pour it all into the game. If you want to be great, and if you want to be, you know, someone that's, you know, will never be forgotten in his league. So, you know, it's a lot. The, um, the cars and the, and the, the jewelry and, and all the other dumb shit that don't matter means absolutely nothing. And uh, I see a lot of these young kids, they get so unfocused about stuff that, that is um, so material that they can they can lose their focus. Just worry about the game. When you worry about the game, everything is take care of yourself. You worry about the game, worry about your family, and then worry about the game some more. And be selfish, too. It's okay to be selfish because you have to be a little bit selfish to be able to, uh, to be great. Some people have to fall to the wayside at times. That's right. Some people got to fall to the wayside, man. We're going to be selfish. We're going to do what we do, and we're going to keep on giving it to them. Because this is the Doja Torture Podcast, number 100. Oh, they super loud with the claps. They super loud. Oh, my goodness. They are super loud, man. It's 100. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'ams. It's okay to be selfish, man. I had to learn how to be selfish, man. For a very long time, I didn't really know how to be selfish. I was very selfless. And I was giving myself and giving my energy. And I ain't going to say to the wrong people because I was giving it to the people that I love, you know. But I was probably giving a little too much of my energy to the people that I love. And I wasn't thinking about myself. And so you can't expect anybody to have the drive that you have. You can't expect anybody to want it like you're going to want it. So after a few of the people that I was giving my energy to started to let me down, they started to find other things that they were interested in. And, and, and it's OK. You know, we're not mad at anybody at all. But we had to learn a hard lesson that we can't expect anybody to have the same drive that we have. And so after years of giving ourselves a little too much we had to learn how to get a little selfless i mean a little selfish excuse me selfless you see how it just rolls off the tongue like i can't even help it but yeah man we had to learn how to bet on ourselves. and i'm talking about our because you know y'all know I, I i i got dual personalities but yeah man i had to learn how to bet on myself man i had to learn how to depend on me i had to learn how to put myself in the forefront I didn't really necessarily, you know, want to just name it Doja Toja and just have it just just be me. And, you know, I would like to have co-host and I do have a team, a beautiful team. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to DJ TC. Shout out to DJ Shed Street. Shout out to Black and Wild. Shout out to everybody that's watching, man. You know, shout out to my brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, suspenseful. Suspense the socialite. I got a great team, but we had to learn how to be selfish about our energy, selfish about our goals. And we had to start betting on the person that you look in the mirror and you see. You got to learn how to bet on yourself, man, because ain't nobody going to do it like you going to do it. You did what I'm saying. So that's what it was all about. And then we was like, well, fuck it. We're going to call this the Doja Toja podcast and we're going to do this shit every week just to show these folks that we serious about what's going on. We're going to show them that in order to get these folks to believe that you really want to do something, you got to be consistent. You got to come every week, no matter if it's one person watching or you got 10 people watching. We done had 100 people watching. And then sometimes we done had zero people watching. Every episode that you try to do or, you know, anytime that you try to set your mind to do something, you're going to have all kinds of obstacles in your way. You're going to have hurdles that you got to jump. You're going to have commas that you got to run past. 
stop signs that try to slow you down even periods period <laughs> but shit we turned this bitch into a run on sentence and we just kept on going man non-stop till we got to 100 what they say men lie women lie numbers don't you did so that's why I started putting a number on it because technically we don't done over 100 shows you know we we've done shows under a lot of different names but we start putting a number on it so when they start like seeing me post about the show and they start being like damn he done did 50 damn he done did 70 goodness gracious he on 93 man he on 100 what it feel like to do a hundred of anything to be consistent to to dedicate your time and your energy to something to where you do it a hundred times how good would you be if you did it a hundred times if you went to the gym a hundred times in the year how would your body look what would your mind be like if you decided to read a hundred books not the three thousand books a year like cat williams said because most of that shit is cap we really mean when you dedicate your energy, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit into doing something that you love, doing something that's productive. How good, how far will you get? And then after you do it, and then you you do it once, you do it twice, you do it 10 times, you might not see the results that you might want to receive. You might not get the fame and notoriety that you may think you deserve. Folks may decide to not support you and overlook you at any, you know what I'm saying, uh, given opportunity. They'll come out with awards. They won't say your name. They'll have parties. They won't invite you. They'll have events. They'll bring other people in your place and put other people on your pedestal. And then you'll ask yourself, well, damn, why not me? But that's exactly what you're supposed to ask yourself. Why not me? You know what? Why I'm not investing in me. So I see people all the time be like, man, I want to have a podcast because they have a couple of statuses on Facebook that get a couple of likes. They like the attention that they get because they, you know, the man on social media or they post a couple of pictures on Instagram and they get, you know, 50 likes when they they they, they cut their hair and they take they, they, they buy that new outfit. And then some folks be like, man, I can't do it today because I ain't getting no haircut or I can't do it today because my camera ain't all the way right. Or I ain't got no mic like they got on Breakfast Club. So I can't do it. We done went through plenty of mics. We done had plenty of fucked up shows. Dogs barking in the background. My mama just coming out of nowhere. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just saying, hey, out of nowhere. Plenty of crazy episodes. But we ain't stopped. Because we invested in ourselves. And when you invest in yourself... Are you going to let yourself down? What you going to say to yourself when the going get tough? Will the tough get going? Or will the tough just go home? There's a lot of cliche statements, man. But until you actually put yourself out there, you won't understand the go hard or go home. You won't understand some of the statements until you put yourself first and invest your energy and your time and what you really believe in, what you have a passion for. Sure, we wanted to be on a radio station. Sure, I trolled a lot of DJs and a lot of people don't necessarily fuck with the way I do, you know, my my business or the way that, that I express my opinion. And after a while, they try their best to ignore me. But we didn't let it stop us. 
We just kept on building. Brick by brick, like my boy say on Snowfall. Block by block. Episode by episode. And when you look around, after a while, you start being like, damn, that's a hell of a resume. Oh, shit. We the ones that they looking at. We the ones that they want to be like. We the ones that they want to copy. But as much as they try to copy the blueprint, it's the passion that they lack. It's the dedication that they don't have. It's the perseverance that they forget about. And then after, you know, a couple of years and and, and your stuff is not monetized, you're not really making no money from what you're doing. Some folks may just give up. Oh, man, podcasting ain't going to make you no money. Why would I do that? But no, if it's really what you like to do. If being funny is really what you like to do, you say you're funny on Facebook, right? Have you decided to get on any stages and express your funniness? Have you done any skits to build on your comedy? Or are you just going to keep playing with it? You're going to keep wasting your time and your energy. Or you just want to just, you know, it's just a hobby. This is sort of a hobby for me, but this is a little bit more than a hobby. This is a passion. I seen Howard Stern and I was like, damn, I'd like to do that. Casey Kasem, Tom Joyner. I was like, damn, I'd like to do that. Yeah, we do a lot of other things as well. Like we, we, we know how to make music, we produce. We know how to pour our energy into others and make them better at what they do. We like to inspire. And excuse me, I know I keep saying we, but shit, it's Dame Doja and it's Brian Jones. Some may know either one, but at the end of the day, the mission is still the same. Whether or not I'm giving my energy into some something that I believe in, I knew that I had to give that energy times 10 into what was mine, what had my name on it. So that's the brand, Doja Toja. Because we felt like they wasn't really believing us. So we had to show them. And when you show them, sometimes they might not even want to look at it. So you have to keep showing them. And keep putting this shit in their motherfucking face until they no longer can get it away from it. Illuminiki say optimism is perspective. Illuminiki say a lot of other things, but yes, it's all about the perspective. The game look easy until you are inside of the game. And it's the fourth quarter and you tired and that clock running and they pass you the ball and everybody on the audience is looking at you to make that shot. That perspective change. It's easy to say, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast. Then you get to episode seven and you like, I don't think I want to do this shit no more. Right. So just think about that for a while. It was a time that we had to stop being selfless and start being selfish about what we believe in. And that can go for anybody and to anybody that can go for anything that you really want to do. And again, I had to learn myself. Stop worrying about what them folks, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what them folks going to say? What them folks going to do? Who going to support you? Because there's a whole world out there of people that love what you can provide. And it's up to you to go out there and find those people 
that fuck with what you do. Or you can just keep doing it for practice in your own, you know, Instagram or your own Instagram live. You can do that as well. Whatever floats your boat, my my people. Whatever floats your boat. So, yeah, man, this is the Doja Torture Podcast. Number 100. Very happy to be here. Great show ahead. And we just wanted to kind of like vent a little bit, even though down, we, we, we already like down to 30 minutes in. And I ain't even talked about no topics or nothing yet. <laughs> Excuse me, man. I, I'm a drink. I'm going to drink my drink right in front of y'all, man, it's, it, for this show, man. Because we deserved it. But, yeah, man, thank you, man, DJ TC, for always, you know, supporting what I do. Um, I don't always make it on Fridays, but I do what I can to at least stop in and say what's up. Because you're a hell of a DJ. And the people that are watching you while you DJ every Friday at 830 T11, maybe 12. They are really enjoying themselves and they really enjoying what you do. DJ Shed said he was going to start playing gospel. And I told him, man, I don't even care about gospel music. I ain't listening to no gospel. I don't really care for church because I don't really want to. I don't want to worship with the group of people that I usually be involved with when I'm at church. I just don't have a care for it. But with the Sunday morning mixtape, I find myself rejoicing. I find myself enjoying the blessing. I find myself praying to be better. And I got to say, man, it's because my brothers decided to not listen or not, you know, uh, second guess the platform and not worried about the fact that it had my name on it. You know how many people I asked to be a part of Doja Toja? There was a bunch of different DJs that was supposed to be like, it was supposed to be like a little radio station. And I asked a bunch of DJs, hey man, y'all DJ already. Y'all ain't on no radio station. Why don't we start our own radio? You know, you take this slot. You take this slot. Don't y'all DJ every night anyway? Don't you got Wi-Fi? Why you got Wi-Fi here? Take my password. You ain't even got to pay me. Start DJing at this particular time. Then I start DJing at this particular time. And we'll all take slots. And we'll build our audience. And shout out to the, those that tried at least. But I feel like some just was like, man, that ain't got my name on it, man. I'm not finna let you get rich. And, and like I'm working for you. And some of them still ain't on no DJ. You know what I'm saying? I mean, still ain't on no radio station. Still ain't on no Twitch or no Mixler or, no, or, or, you know, still not building their audience themselves. But everybody want to have an audience on somebody else's platform. But not the brother, Dame Doja. But my brothers, they stepped up for me, man. And I really appreciate it, man. So again, man, I know I was a little long-winded. But I just had to show my gratitude for the support that you guys are giving me every week, man. Whether or not I've got now run my mouth about some interesting topics. Or whether or not I'm over here just fucking up the whole time. Y'all be here for me and I thank y'all, man. All right, that's enough of that, man. Let's get to the god dang topics, Doja. I know where y'all are here. Y'all done seen it before. It's the damn topics. <laughs> it's the topics, man. That's why y'all really here. So, um, oh, yeah, we decided to switch it up a little bit. This is how we're going to do. We're going we gonna, to we gonna zoom in a little bit on them. It just takes time. You're right, TC. It definitely takes time. It's hard goddamn work to get to a hundred. Shit don't happen overnight. 
And then folks be like, damn, you be doing, you be going for like four hours? You got a four hour show? How do you do it? Like, I don't know, man. It's a lot to talk about, man. And if I miss out on one topic, black and wild gonna be like, why you ain't talk about this? I, I, I gotta talk about them all. <laughs> New music, man, coming out this weekend. New music coming out this weekend. What we got, what we got, what we got. Kanye West is supposed to be finally coming out with his goddamn album, man. And I don't really even know if I really give a fuck about Kanye no more, to tell you the truth. But I'll go ahead and tell y'all that Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign are finally going to come out with that Vultures album that was supposed to come out when Nicki Minaj dropped her album back in December. And then Kanye was crying the other day online, like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's helping me. They're blackballing me. No shit, Sherlock. What you thought they was going, you know, just forget? Did you Kanye West? Actually, they did. A lot of people did just forget. It's funny that some folks can be very, very acceptance to apologies from everybody, but the people that's actually trying to do right. Some folks be willing to accept everybody apology from, but from the people that's really trying to do right. But yeah, man, Kanye West is finally finna drop Vultures Volume One, and he's supposed to have got to be coming out with a volume every month for the next three months or something like that. That was just him and his daughter. But we don't know how we feel about this Kanye mess no more, man. You know, it, it might be time to move on from old Mr. West, man. And we're going to tell y'all more in a minute. But other music that is dropping um, this weekend, Fabio Foreign is dropping a new album called New Pain and Love Part 2. Yeah, man, shout out Fabio, man. He got a new song with Meat Mill called The Same 24 Hours. Very, very good song. You can check it out on one of uh, the Doja Told You podcast playlists. We didn't play it today, but definitely got that one in rotation. Made in uh, Tokyo, Made in TYO. It's coming out with an album, TYO 808. Usher is going to have one of his biggest weekends of his life as he headlines the Super Bowl. And he's also coming out with an album called Coming Home. So be on the lookout for that. It should be uh, an incredible album. Usher has been teasing singles for about a year now. And now that he has the biggest stage in pretty much the world with the Super Bowl, we are very excited to see what he rolls out on this new album. And we also going to play one of his new singles called Ruin later on in the show. Um, Little Sims, we don't really know who that is. They're dropping an album called Drop 7. Will Roche is dropping Waterworld. Nardo Wick is dropping Wick style, and that is actually already out. Shout out to Nardo Wick for Wick style. We ain't play that on this particular show, but we might we we might squeeze the video um on part two. So y'all stay tuned for that. But yeah, there's still new music that we um talked about last week. We really didn't uh get into too much, but we did play the new music from. Bossman D'Lo, one of the hottest dudes in the streets right now. He got the song uh, Get In With Me. He got straight out of Florida, and they talking about him all over the country. Like, he really, like, whatever he had going on, however he did it, he did it. And Bossman D'Lo is doing his thing. Um, La Russell got an album with Hit Boy on the way. We played uh, another one for, uh, featuring Hit Boy. Um, we still riding that Benny the Butcher album, Everybody Can't Go. JT. Dropped a new single called Sideways. Um, and her City Girl counterpart is working on a single called Yams. That should be dropping pretty soon. And, of course, Don Tolliver has the song Bandit, which we will be playing a little later on in the show as well. But I guess we might as well give a congratulations to... And, and don't shoot me, Nikki. Congratulations to... <laughs> 
to Megan Thee Stallion for having the number one song in the country, man. Megan Thee Stallion, man, with the number one song in the country, man. The song is called His. Or is it His? Hmm. That's a good question. Megan Thee Stallion did it, man. She And she's supposed to, supposed to be... She's supposed to be independent. But it takes a lot of money to get the number one song in the country. And I just want y'all to know, like... For her to be independent and have the number one song in the country, that like, like that's tough. That is one hell of a feat. Nevertheless, nah, I'm not crying. Like Doja, are you crying? <laughs> Nevertheless, man, shout out to uh, Megan Thee Stallion. However, she did it. She had to diss a couple of people. She had to, you know, get weaponized Nicki Minaj's fan base and and everybody else who may have felt those a certain type of way about her and she did the damn thing and now she has the number one song in the country with the single hiss and a lot of folks you know some folks might not be digging it all that much but hey it is what it is it is what it is spare us your comments uh nikki i know you're a barb but it is what it is like we said megan the stallion number one song in the country all right, so where do we start, man? Last week we did the show, and right after we did the show, man, we got online and we seen that it was a fight between two R&B artists. And we was like, God dang. Why are these artists always getting in the fights after we do the show? Why don't they get in the fight while we're you know, before we do our damn show. So we could talk about it that week. And in case y'all don't know who we talking about, or I keep saying we, I don't know why I keep talking to third person. In case y'all don't know what I'm talking about, man, I'm talking about Trey Songs and Jaquees, who decided to throw some hands while they was out in Dubai. Why would you decide to fight why you in Dubai of all places? I don't know. Like, I was really thrown off by that. But anyway, Jacquees got online and he had to express his distaste for old Trey Songs. And Trey Songs, man, I don't know like what the hell he been on. But Trey Songs really like turned into a whole villain out here in these streets, didn't he? He was like one of the good guys, and then he just became a villain. Amazing. How he just did like a, a, a 360. Freaking amazing, man. What is up with old Trey? From rape allegations to not fighting other R&B dudes? What is getting into the guy? I guess he say, hey man, R. Kelly ain't got shit on me. I'ma show y'all. <laughs> I'ma show y'all, man, how to be a real R&B villain. But anyway, man, Jacquees got online. And how do we know that Jacquees got his ass whooped? Well, he was the first to talk about it and got online and, and, and spilled the beans to everybody. Look, I ain't even gonna cap. I want the world to know this bitch ass nigga Trey Songs is a bitch. Period. This nigga's a bitch, bro. This nigga came in the club talking about rape. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Is it cool to call somebody a B I T C H and then use the word period while you do it? That's got to be some type of violation, right? Just check it. I want the world to know this bitch ass nigga Trey Songs is a bitch. Period. This nigga's a bitch, bro. This nigga came in the club talking about rape. Fuck you talking about rape for a bitch ass nigga? Then you come outside the club and swing on your little brother. You's a bitch. Chris Brown the goat. You's a bitch, brother. About a bitch. That ain't even my bitch. You talking about bitches that's with these niggas? The workers? 
You talking about people that came with these niggas? Hey, man. Fuck you, bitch-ass nigga. You a rapist, bitch. And I don't give a fuck if you tell anybody anything about what we text you. Put the message on there, bro. Fuck you, bitch-ass nigga. You can never come around me. Fuck you, nigga. Yeah, he was really pissed off. Look, I ain't even gonna cap. I want the world to know this. Yeah, yeah. The Mixler's not working for you? Well, what the hell is going on with the Mixler? What, is anybody else having some issues with, with the Mixler? It was not letting me log in. It was like acting like I wasn't logged in, so I don't know. But uh, I'm glad that you found a way. I'm glad that you found a way anyway, uh, Black and Wild, AKA McLovin, or whatever name you want to go by this time. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, man. Uh, damn, damn, Jacquees, what the hell? What the hell, Jacquees? Like, that's how you knew he got his ass whooped. Cause he went, he went online fast to call that man a bitch. Like. That's how you knew. That's how you knew right there. You was like, bro, it, that man that got beat up by Trey Songs. How you get beat up by Mr. Steal Your Girl? You supposed to be out stealing your girl and you letting them beat you up. I'll be damned. I, I don't know. That was crazy. You say, I don't believe the beef. Mojo say it's not working for, how is it not working for y'all? Well, y'all get on Facebook, man. Get on, get on uh, Twitch, man. I don't know. Figure it out, man. We, we'll work it out. But yeah, man, Jacquees, man, uh. What you gonna do, Jacquees? Rest in peace to Jacquees' dreads, man. <laughs> Jacquees' dreads, man. You can't be getting in the fights, man, when you got dreads, though. You got to be real, real, like, strategic when you get in the fight and you got some long-ass dreads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't let me chat. Uh, It wouldn't let me like it on, on it, so they was making me... um. Relog in, and I was already logged in, so I don't know what what's what's that about. But yeah, man, rest in peace to goddamn Jaquise's dreads, man. What's up with like? He he, he should have known he ain't got no business getting in no fight with them long ass dreads, man. Cause then he gonna goddamn grab them goddamn dreads and swing you around like a raggedy Ann doll. You know, just swinging them around with the with, with the dreads, just swinging them around. <laughs> oh, man! I could just picture goddamn Trey Song swinging goddamn Jaquees around like he Petey Pablo. Put it around your head like a helicopter. I can't put the drink down, man. It ain't nothing but water, man. I'm, I'm thirsty. Yeah, man. Uh, I just don't understand, man. For one, why would they get in a fight in Dubai? Why did J J Trey Songs call Jaquees a rapist when actually it's Trey Songs that might? Nah, I. You know what? I ain't even gonna. I'm just gonna move on. I'm just gonna move on. But these guys are supposed to be singing love songs to your girl during Valentine's Day. And instead, they out here pulling dreads and fighting. And when Jaquee said, you want to fight me over these people? And he turned around and it was a bunch of like, it was a bunch of people. I wanted one of them dudes to, 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 to come fight him right, right then. Like, what, nigga? Is you talking to me? When he, when he turned around and said, these, like, like regular dudes, 
Oh man, I was like, damn, bro. This is how this is how Trey Songz did Jacquees. This is how Jacquees. <laughs> oh man, man. He should he should have known he had no business out there fighting with dreads, man. He should have known he had no business like swinging him around like Petey Pablo, man. I don't feel sorry for him at all. I don't feel sorry for him at all. Like, you should have known better, buddy. No, this bitch ass nigga Trey Songs is a bitch. About a bitch. Hold on, one that more time. That ain't even my bitch. You talking about bitches that's with these niggas? Now, when he turned around and said these, like, now luckily, them ain't no, you know what I'm saying, California or no Florida dudes, because they would have liable to just come over there and whoop his ass again they just sitting there like damn what the fuck we got to do with the shit like what what the fuck the workers they <laughs> <laughs> could say the workers now nah, well they would have been wrong if they would have came over there and worked your ass jacques goodness gracious man cut the monkey shit out you's embarrassing us homie and then he got the nerve to say that, that, that Trey Songz is banned from Atlanta. I want you to know, Jacquees, you you can't ban nobody from nowhere, my boy. You can't ban nobody from nowhere, my boy. Because Trey Songz is going to be right in Atlanta ASAP. You say, uh, fuck Trey Songz. Can't come back to Atlanta. This nigga came in the club and said, I got on a Q fit. LOL. Whole time nigga hating. This man dancing, introducing himself to niggas, all type of shit. Bitch ass nigga. And I gave that bitch ass nigga a compliment. Man, fuck you, pussy. You a hoe, boy. You a hoe, boy, that love to be fake. And this nigga pulled out my dreads. <laughs> You better be glad them boys wasn't with me, boy. You over with in the A. Every show, we there from the A to NC to Florida. All that shit. You pulled out my dreads. <laughs> oh, man, man. Why did nigga posted a picture of his own dreads, man? I'm telling you, man. I, uh, I just, I just died laughing, man. I, I was like, bro, what the hell? Did he gonna say Chris Brown the goat? Chris Brown, Can like, somebody please tell me what the fuck is going on. I don't know. I'm reading headlines after headlines. Uh, what the fuck? Can somebody please tell me what the fuck is going on? I. We don't know either, man. R&B beef, man. At his finest, man. Goddamn R&B beef. All right, man. Yeah, man. So that that started the week off or the weekend off last week. And I was like, damn it. Boy, I can't wait to get back to the show. Boy, I can't wait. Meanwhile, there's a lot of folks that have been in virtual reality world with those new iPhone, I mean the new Apple Vision Pros. Mojo 305, do you got you you got the Mojo uh you got the, the, the Vision Pros yet? My 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 cousin, he be having all the new Apple stuff before it even come out. It's like he it, it's like he related to the Apple people. Mojo 305 probably watching the show right now for, with, with, with some Apple Vision Pros on. Yeah, man. They now have goggles that are your cell phone, your computer all in one. It's called the Apple Vision Pro. 
And don't be surprised when you see people walking around with one of these on and they're going to be like moving their hands in the air and doing all kinds of movements. They cost $3,500. $3,500. Honor. You know, we did, we on episode 100, you need 35 of them to get an uh, Apple Vision Pro. And um, some folks say that once you once you go Apple Vision Pro, you ain't going to want to go to back to regular reality. Mm-mm. 35 on them. And folks walking around with some ski mask, ski goggles on. $3,500 ski goggles. Just so you can... I mean, you could do a lot of stuff with them on. Like, you could watch a movie, listen to your music, FaceTime, all at the same time. All at the same time. Tell us what they, uh, I, Mojo say, I don't even have the Apple Watch. Yes, you do. You bought it for your daughter. You just don't have it. <laughs> I'm telling on you, cuz. Yeah, you do. Stop lying. You might not have it on, but you got one. <laughs> anyway, man, let's look at some of these celebrities that uh, decided to uh, buy and wear and tell us about the Apple Vision Pros, man. Like Casa Wait, There is an echo. So they say when you put them on and you and you FaceTime, it's like it shows like a fake picture of yourself because you know you can't really FaceTime with the goggles on because it's not your actual face. <laughs> and we got to wonder how does the Simpsons keep predicting the future like this? <laughs> We don't know how the Simpsons keep doing it, but the Simpsons keep predicting the future every time. They 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 they, they never get it wrong. They never seem to get it wrong. So yeah, um TC say he wants some. TC say he gonna go get him. T Pain say he uh he ain't coming back to reality. T Pain say y'all y'all can have this old stinking ass reality to y'all. You know what I'm saying, but you know, cause he ain't coming back. T Pain put him on and he loved him. My boy say he ain't coming back. Y'all thought y'all was gonna leave me in this Monday. Yeah, here we go. Ain't bad graphics having ass, boring, no color having ass reality. You're sadly mistaken. You got another thing coming, and I'm calling the cops because you fit the description of a hater. I'm just letting you know, y'all ain't leaving me behind in this terrible looking world. I'm gone forever. I'm wearing this bitch everywhere. It's over. Y'all shut down Google Glass. Because y'all said ain't nobody gonna wear them damn glasses with the little with the little Dragon Ball Z thing on the side of it. You said wasn't well, nobody gonna wear them shit. And y'all canceled that and now they gone. And now look at what we left with. We and then now it's too late. Now we can't go back. It's over. Y'all not leaving me behind in this dumbass world. I wanna see everything through this motherfucker now and it's going down. I appreciate y'all trying, but futile is, is what I call that shit. Uh-huh. So I'll see y'all on the inside. Gather up that four grand to come, <laughs> come kick it with a nigga on, on the inside. <laughs> I'll see y'all there. Peace out. Yeah, so T Pain say he ain't coming back to reality. He say y'all can have it. The Duval actually was one of the first ones to, you know, uh, 
display them on Instagram. And he also say that all y'all could talk noise about him, like y'all, you know, you know, y'all don't want him, but y'all probably just po and probably can't afford him. Oh shoot, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta plug in my dog on phone before. I mean, I gotta plug in my my computer before it cut off on me. How I forget the how I forget the dog on. Plug my computer in. I'm tripping. Yeah, so um, Le Duval said he ain't coming back to reality. T Pain said he ain't coming back. DJ TC said he wants some. Mojo 305 got some already. He just ain't telling y'all. He got them already. He ain't saying he got them already. Hold on. This is what they look like. The Duval is actually uh, using them right now. That's what it looked like when you got them on. guess that's kind of fine. Looked like he was in the mountains or something. Yeah. Anyway. Lil Duval said he ain't coming back to reality. So y'all get y'all bread up, man. $4,000 and you can be in virtual reality too. I I, I know you want one. Huh? You probably going to get, you going to probably have it real soon. DJ TC, we going to go over your house and, and, and use them. You, you you got you already got an Apple computer. You already got an iPad. Now you you're gonna get you some Vision Pros, and then you while it won't even have to wear your glasses no more. Imagine that. All right, so we are gonna keep this thing moving, man. I know I need to hurry up and move along because it's I'm, I'm making the show long for no reason at all. Uh, what else we got? What else we got, man? Did y'all did y'all see Twenty One Savage? cheating and cards playing against a and ross he was cheating let's check out man let's just check out how 21 savage pulled this off man like what, what why he cheating that boy like that nah he's not gonna scam me trust i know how to play that shit yeah nah do we have like a table where we could sit like this yeah like, a little circle like a little circle on the table yeah. here yeah. He's gonna put table right here. So sorry. You gotta play at least a thousand. All right, I'm gonna learn it, bro. I don't give a fuck. You're gonna lose more, so it's fine. High card. High card, yeah. It is. It just hey. Fuck, bro. Oh. Oh. Show it first, cause I showed it first last time. Don't be. 21 Savage, one of them folks. What my soda? <laughs> 21 Savage, one of them folks that'll steal from you and help you look for uh, for what he just stole. Oh man, you missing a hundred dollars? You 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 check the trash can. <laughs> 21 Savage, man. That's Savage, man. 21 Savage. You you Savage for real. You got the right name, my boy. He was gonna, he gonna cheat playing cards with the boy. And look around for it. You know what I'm saying? Look at the cards like... Like he ain't know that he cheated. Then he gonna turn around and blame blame Aiden and Ross. For cheating. Like, he, yeah, like he gonna turn around and blame, blame you for cheating. Come on, 21. 
Stall him out. 21. But I don't know. It might not be real. It might not be real. Like, because now, all of a sudden, 21 coming out with some trade. Like, he coming out with some playing cards. But they was on live the whole time, and the, and, and, and the man fans seen them. Seen them cheating the whole time. They're going to turn around like. And blame that man for cheating. Talking about you using scratch cards. He looking at the cards like he don't, like he don't know he cheating, man. The queen has it. See, look, look, see the six. Mm -mm. See, see, bro, what you want? Huh? What you want? Just get my bed back at two right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, man, twenty one savage, man, savage, man, savage life, E N T, man, dirty dog. They say 21 was down 400,000 and ran it back up 250K using Mark cards and left immediately after. And word on the streets is A and Ross, who's a streamer, who, you know, he, he he's a streamer who who's sweet as pie. Sweet lit. Sweet lit A and Letting them folks lick it, lick, lick them like a lollipop. Paws. What is Damn, it now, bro? Son. Fresh, fresh ups, fresh ups, chat, fresh ups. I'm about fifty on you. Chat, fresh I'll ups, chat. I'll get it, chat. He didn't is that cheat? cheating. I don't understand. He didn't cheat. He tapped the card. I don't understand. How could you? Damn, son. Oh shit! Ain't his chat. They ain't in loyals. They ain't in loyals. Let me see. Hey. What? Oh, y'all ever play basketball in y'all crib just dribbling around and shit? The whole time, the people in the chat telling him he cheating, bro. He, he, he cheating you. These folks crazy, man. We ain't even gonna talk about how Aiden Ross then got scammed later on that week by paying Playboy Cardi. Supposedly, at first they said he paid Playboy Cardi $50,000 to show up. But then it was after the Grammys. Then it turns out that they say that Playboy Cardi was supposed to pull up for two million dollars to be on his live. And then you can't even see Playboy Cardi, cause he dressed like a he be wearing a mask and he dressed like nowhere man. So hold on, you can't even see him. Let's let's see if we so can see. Him. You can't even see him. Um, so I was the Grammys. That man showed up wearing all black with a mask on. You couldn't even see him. Aiden Ross is a sweet lick, man. These boys out here licking, licking these white boys' paws for their little money, man. Bro, niggas is violating him, bro. This shit crazy, bro. This is crazy, bro. Come on, nah, 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 bro, bro. Aiden, we gonna talk, bro. This, this is crazy, like, bro, what am I, Bro, they violating. Nigga just got the nigga. I thought I was the method. Aiden's the method. What the fuck? I'm supposed to be the method, nigga. He just got two million walked off, nigga. Aiden, you just. I can't take this no more. But they violating this nigga, bro. Order my mama the nigga, bro. Niggas is violating him, bro. This shit crazy, bro. 
This is crazy, bro. Don't be don't be hurt. Be sweet lit. Sweet. Sweet lick. We all had that white boy in the neighborhood that was the sweet lick. All had the white boy in the neighborhood that was that sweet lick. Oh shoot, there's a there's a Val- Vladimir Putin interview with Tucker Carson. T- Tucker Carson has a Val- a Putin interview. I don't even want to say his first name. Oh, we're gonna have to get into that next. We're gonna get into that on part two. All right, so uh, keeping it moving, keeping it moving. Um, we almost done. We're going to talk about the Grammys in just a second. But first, real Boston Richie arrested for trafficking marijuana. If you guys don't know who real Boston Richie is, he's a rapper that goes by the name Real Boston Richie, a.k.a. The Bubba Man. Yeah, he got the nerve to call himself the Bubba Man. And he thought the police weren't going to come get him. Dropped the music video, practically serving on the block in the music video. And them folks came and got him, man. Real Boston Richie. We was just talking about Real Boston Richie the other day for being a uh, a pedophile. In January, his... uh, so-called girlfriend turned 18 in January and he'd been dating her for quite some time. And then he got a nerve to call himself the Bubba Man. First off, who the fuck is still buying Bubba? And we ain't talking about Bubba Gump Shrimp. (laughs) Oh, man, man. They call himself the Bubba Man, man. You can't make this type of stuff up, bro. Even if you tried, you can't make this shit up, bro. You got rubber bands, a glove water cash. You got a box in the background that say Bubba. In case you know anybody don't really know, Bubba is a it's a kind of mar of, of marijuana, not even the best kind. And this man called himself the Bubba Man. And um, the police then came and got him. It was only a matter of time, though, because either either for pedophilia, for snitching. How you be a snitch and then you get caught serving weed? That, 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 how, bruh? These new rappers, bruh. What the? I'm trying to figure it out. Like, how you go from the bubble man, but you used to be the snitch man. And I ain't, you know, if you want to be a truth teller, you could be a truth teller, but this man called himself the bubble man. He practically snitched on himself in the video. <laughs> no shit. He say none of this shit was even my plan. God damn the bubble man, man. Well, raps wasn't that great anyway. If you ask me, the raps wasn't even really that great. So, nah, I ain't gonna front. He, he, he might be alright, but they got him. The bubble man. Imagine that. Can't make this shit up, man. All right, so you might as well go ahead and get into the main event of the show, the Grammys. I know a lot of people don't watch the Grammys. A lot of folks don't really care. But uh, I didn't really check the Grammys out. I just watched parts and pieces, and I just watched a bunch of, um, yeah, I just watched a bunch of clips. So we'll go ahead and name some of the winners of the Grammys, or at least the winners that we care about. For one, congratulations and shout out to Victoria Monet, 
who won Best New Artist for her R&B smash album. What's the name? What's the name of her album again? Victoria Monet. If y'all don't know, she got the song On My Mama, On My Hood. She won Best New Artist and she dropped the album, The Jaguar Tour 2. At the age of 34, she is a well-seasoned artist who has been in the game for quite some time, I guess in development. And I don't know how the hell she's still a, a new artist if she, you know, she she been dropping for quite some time, but I don't know. But yeah, congratulations to uh, Victoria Monet. Go check out her album. Uh, it's called Jaguar 2. It got a lot of good songs on there. One of the best albums to come out last year. And we are very proud of her. She's a very talented uh, young lady. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? We got one. Let's find, let me pull up the winners. Grammy winners. Who y'all was rooting for in the Grammys? Taylor Swift. Who you was rooting for, Cuz? I know my cousin. He loved Taylor Swift. He like, you know, Taylor Swift is his one of one of his favorite artists. Grateful Dead and Taylor Swift. Tell him, Cuz. All right, let me see, let me see, let me see who we got, who we got, who we got. What the winners, what the winners. Grammy winners, man. Okay. Uh, we just gonna name a couple of them. We don't really gonna go down the whole list. Uh, the biggest award of the night was Album of the Year. And of course, Beyonce did not, wasn't even nominated for Album of the Year. And we will talk about that in just a second. But... Congratulations to Taylor Swift. She won what uh, uh she won a Grammy for her album Midnights. But a lot of folks feel like SZA with SOS was supposed to take that award. Uh best new artist was Victoria Monet. Um Coco Jones could have easily been uh selected for that um that award. Uh but congratulations to Coco Jones because she also won. Um Let's see. Let's see what we got. Best song, Billie Eilish. Best record, Miley Cyrus. Best pop duo and group performance, SZA and Phoebe Bridges with Ghost in the Machine. Congratulations to SZA. Our girl, Tyler. You know, the, 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 the young, um, beautiful African singer Tyler she won uh best what it was African best uh it was a new new um uh, a new category called best African music performance Tyler and you know she got the song um water very talented young lady and uh she probably be winning a whole lot more awards in the future congratulations to her um, uh, best solo p uh, performance, Miley Cyrus with Flowers. Best vocal album, Taylor Swift with Midnight's, of course. Uh, what else? What else we got before we talk about what we came here to talk about in the first place? Producer. Best reggae album, Julian. Julian Marley. They still, they still making Marleys. Marley's still out here winning, man. Julian Marley with uh, Colors of Royal for Best Reggae Marley. Uh, I didn't even know. Like, there was another Marley that was, like, doing it. Like, who knew? Why y'all didn't tell me that they, they, they got another Marley? His name Julian Marley. Is he, is he a grandson or something? Yeah, congratulations to uh, Julian Marley, man. Colors of Aurora. Colors of Aurora. <laughs> Julian Marley. Hmm. Who would have known? Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Tyler. 
R&B performance, Coco Jones, man. The beautiful Coco Jones won best R&B performance for one of my favorite songs of the year. The song was called I See You, Coco Jones. Very stunning young lady, man, with a beautiful voice. She deserved all the awards coming to her. You might know her uh, from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air show. I know her because I love the hell out of that damn song, I See You. Yes, very stunning young lady um, and voice of an angel. Supreme range. She is, uh, you want, you might want to go check out her album and go look out for her uh, in the future. Y'all are, y'all probably already know about it because, you know, we, we've been playing that music. But congratulations to, uh, let, 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 take a look at this dress. Take a look at the dress. Congratulations to Coco Jones, man. Best R&B performance. All right. And what else we got? What else we got? Country album, best R&B album, Victoria Monet with Jaguar 2. And best R&B song, Scissor with Snooze. But y'all know why we here. We here to talk about, hold on, let me cut the music. We here to talk about the best rap album best rap performance best rap everything killer mike ran off with a sweep in the grammys by um yeah by being old and still deciding to rap my boy killer mike did that shit man congratulations to killer mike here go his uh his acceptance speech Let's get into it. But the real controversy that everybody was talking about, first and foremost, they still don't televise the rap performance. I mean, the rap uh, Grammys, they still don't televise. So by the time these folks win, nobody is really, you know, folks are just kind of coming into the award ceremony. They ain't even cut on the cameras yet. But uh, at least we do have a, a clip of him winning and he won all three rap categories best rap album best rap song and best rap performance with scientists and engineers featuring future and andre 3000 killer mike with the album michael is 48 years old and um this might be his first solo grammy i think he might have won one with the whole world with um with outcast but anywho Killer Mike proved a lot of folks wrong and a lot of people are there's been a lot of folks saying that you know he don't really deserve the Grammy because you know they didn't hear they didn't hear any of his music and you know you got your some folks that just was saying how he won over Drake how he won over Doja Cat how he won over Travis Scott but if you heard any of the albums from last year, you would know that yes, 21 Savage and Drake dropped a great album, but Killer Mike's Michael was a masterpiece. He just simply rapped like his life depended on it. He rapped like the bills was due, like rent was due, past due, and he had to rap to get the bill money. Killer Mike, Michael, congratulations. But turns out, immediately after winning the award, we seen this video of Killer Mike, this clip of Killer Mike being walked out of the Grammys. Oh, hold on, I messed up. And cuffs. That's Killer Mike in handcuffs at the Grammys. Hey, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. What the fuck? 
What the fuck? Are you serious? Yeah, man. So the 48 year old political activist, rapper, business owner in Atlanta, Georgia, was arrested for a battery, misdemeanor battery, immediately after winning three Grammys. I mean, that's a hell of a night. You win three Grammys. Best night of your life. And then you get arrested. That's crazy. So word on the block is. That Killer Mike shoved a man in the crowd. First, I heard that he shoved a man in the crowd, but it turns out that he got into a shoving match or something of the sort with the security guard. He got in a shoving match with security guard at uh, at the Grammys and they had it on tape and then they took that video to the rest of the security, to the cops and they later on walked him up out of there in handcuffs. But he still got his three Grammys. Shout out to his wife, Shea Bigger. And he's still, you know, it's still a celebration, man. Great music still prevails. And as he said, Killer Mike now proves that you can, there is no age limit in rap. It's no longer considered a young man's sport or a young man's profession. As long as you are professional, you work hard, you have talent, and you drop some hell of fire shit you will be celebrated. So congratulations anyway to Killer Mike. And that little misdemeanor ain't nothing but no saying the extra news story, man. Sometimes you got to fall down to come up. And then even when you do come up, you might slip and fall again. But shit, you just got to get right back up. So congratulations to Killer Mike for walking away with three Grammys. It's a sweep. Congratulations to Victoria Monet. Congratulations to SZA. Congratulations to my dog, M80. I know a person who won a Grammy too. His name is M80, Marquise, AKA Grammy Davis Jr. My boy got him a Grammy. For uh, Lecrae, Lecrae also got the Grammy. I know we, we, we usually skip the uh, gospel categories. We don't really even talk about the gospel categories or the traditional R&B performance uh, by PJ Morton for Good Morning and Spoken Word. Michelle Obama won a Grammy for Spoken Word album, The Light We Carry, Overcoming in certain Uncertain Times. Congratulations to Michelle Obama. I didn't even know that until I just did the research. And... Um, yeah, I ain't no Michelle Obama out here with, 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 with poetry albums. Go on, girl, with your bad self. Michelle Obama out here winning Grammys and stuff. Man, y'all can go get that. Go check out her her book or uh, Grammy, I mean, or what what is it? Album. Spoken word poetry album by the former first lady, our queen, Michelle Obama, man. The light we carry. Grammy nominated artists on your bitch ass. Go on, girl. Ain't nothing that girl can't do. But yeah, um, what else? What other winners that we didn't name? What other winners that we didn't name? Um, hmm. I think that's about it. But yeah, contemporary Christian music album, Lecrae, with uh, the name of the album is called Church Clothes. Uh, I haven't heard it, but I might check it out one day, or maybe not. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. But my dog won, man, and I'm finna pull. Let me pull up my dog, man. Show y'all, man. I know, I know, I know. Grammy winners out here, man. 
my dog, man. M80, man, a.k.a. Marquise Davis, a.k.a. Grammy Davis Jr. Worked hard for the opportunity. I was in the studio with uh, this young guy while he was, you know, putting together his portfolio, putting it, getting his skills together. And he can now say that he's a Grammy winner, man. And I'm so happy for him, man. Congratulations, my dog, M80. For producing on that album by Lecrae, Church Clothes. And y'all know y'all. Y'all know how we used to wear the church clothes and you couldn't get your church, church clothes dirty. So you have to have to change. Right after. What was that? School clothes. Shit, I don't know. All right, so... um. With that being said, let's get into Jay-Z wins Global Impact Award, a.k.a. the Black Grammy, a.k.a. Dr. Dre's Grammy. And he had a, a speech that he gave after winning his Grammy that, um, every, that left everybody talking. Let's see if we can pull up that uh, particular speech before we get up out of here for part one. Let's see, what we what can we find Jay-Z's speech? Yeah, man, Jay-Z, man, still winning Grammys, man, even though he ain't dropping no music, man. Make him mad, Jay-Z. Keep making him mad, man, and tell these folks what they, what they need to hear. You're listening to Doja Toja Radio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is the GOAT. Jay Z, man, you know, hate him. Hi, hate, I'm Zoe Gong. Hate him or love him, he definitely puts it down for the culture, man, and um, well deserved Grammy and excellent speech. How do we feel about Beyonce winning? What is it, 38 Grammys and no Album of the Year Grammys? Some folks say that you know, like, damn, you got all the Grammys in the world. Like, what is Album of the Year? Does she really always drop the best album ever? You know, are they being, you know, Thank you. are they being a little greedy for wanting to not only win Grammy for almost everything, but also win Grammy for album of the year? You know, I don't know. Like, I think that some folks tried to compare what Jay-Z said to Kanye by saying, you know, like uh, Kanye said it first and now Jay-Z trying to take credit or, or trying to be like Kanye. But Kanye was talking about a music video and he said that Jay, uh, Beyonce made the best music video of all time with single ladies and Taylor Swift won that award. So album of the year though, Beyonce is an iconic artist who probably should have won album of the year for at least one of those albums that she's, uh, the, the many albums that she's come out with. But, um, I like what Jay-Z said about showing up and that what that's kind of a lot. What this show is about today. It's like, sometimes you just got to continue to show up, man. You know, sometimes they, even when I have to do the show, I, ju I don't really be in the mood and I just be like, man, I don't really want to do it, but you got to keep showing up. You say, no, it's not the same, Doja told you. He, she got to win all the awards. Or, or are you saying it's not the same uh, between Kanye and Jay-Z? Either way, I like his message by saying, sh uh, keep showing up. Because he did mention how he boycotted and how, like, you know, they still don't have a rap Grammy that's televised. Well, every now and then they televise it. It all depends on who wins. But... How do we feel about him saying, um, just show up, make sure you keep showing up until they call you the greatest of all time. And so, Hey, this is Doja told you number one hundred, and we're going to keep showing up for y'all, man. Let's play one more, uh, acceptance speech. And the Grammy goes to Solana Imani Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we even go any further, can we just get a round of applause for how great Lizzo looks. Yes, man. 
beautiful. Lizzo. Like, yes. Goodness. Lizzo looks amazing. Doesn't she? And congratulations to um, SZA for winning this award. Yes, man. Congratulations to SZA, man, once again. That was beautiful. That was a beautiful acceptance speech. I, I, I will say that much. But, yeah, that girl done got some work done. It looks good, though. It looks good, man. You know, it looks good. All right, so, man, we're going to go ahead and close part one. And we got a lot to talk about on the politics and allegations part. I got to tell some folks about themselves. We got to talk about Monique. We got to talk about um, Joe Biden. And we got to talk about a little sports. Um, Before we do that, um, be on the lookout for Jeezy. Jeezy got a tiny desk coming out real soon, man. So we're going to be on the lookout for that. We're going to keep y'all um, in the know and keep y'all, you know, aware of what Jeezy got going on with his new tiny desk. Yeah, keep y'all in the loop, man. Jeezy with his tiny desk performance. Snowman live at the tiny desk, man. It should be a good, it should be a good one. I'm very, very interested to see. They got the violins in that thing. They got the cello in that thing. They got a little bass guitar. So, yeah, that should be a great a great performance. We, we look forward to that. That boy Snowman, a.k.a. Jeezy, with the Tiny Desk performance on the way. Again, um, a lot of new music going to be dropping this weekend. So, y'all, you know what I'm saying, be on the lookout for that, man. I appreciate everybody for their support, man. Uh, I know this has been a very long part one. Uh, we'll try to do what we can to hurry up and speed through part two. And we don't really have that. Uh, we got a couple of songs. We got a couple of R&B songs to kind of play for y'all um, during the break. Yeah, I do love SZA and um, C- uh, Lizzo as well, man. They, they, uh, that was a beautiful speech. I just had to share that with you guys. So we got some new music from Usher, new music from Nicki Minaj. Uh, Don Tolliver, Ryan Leslie, Megan Thee Stallion, Chameleon, and YK Osiris through the break. We'll be right back in about 15 minutes. Go get you some popcorn. Go use the bathroom. Take a quick break. This is just part one of the Doja Torture Podcast number 100. (laughs) And we'll be right back. I appreciate all the love and support. I love you guys. Shout out DJ TC, shout out McLovin, shout out my cousin Mojo305, shout out the Fee, aka Phoenix, shout out Illuminiki, shout out to Gyal Z, shout out to the Mad Hatter, shout out to my my brother, my uh cousin, uh T Dash for fixing my damn brakes, man. That boy got me back on the road. Shout out to everybody at the Atlanta Art District Studio, DJ Decepticon, BreakMyTrack.com. This is Doja Toja.com's The Doja Toja Podcast, number 100. We'll be right back, man. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dame Doja. If you're looking to get your interview done or be a guest host on our podcast, hit us up at DojaToja at gmail.com. Bump what you heard. Remember who told you? It's Doja Toja.